stage two of the Giro de Europe finds us in Belgium, a country that seems to produce top class cyclists at a proportion of out of ratio with its population, and not just great beers. The Ronde van Flanderen, Tour of Flanders, or just simply de Ronde, however you refer to it, it's a classic of the cycling calendar and has the longest streak of continuance, with a run of over 100 years. Even a world war couldn't interrupt this race. In real life, the Ronde is around 265 kilometres, and although lacking in the elevation of many continental races, it is made up for by attacking the same loop of hills repeatedly. And as if these brutal, short, cl sharp climbs were not harsh enough, they are also cobbled. It is here that RGT have chosen to honour the race with a 9 kilometre extract, featuring the Eau de Quermont and the Paterberg. The race starts with a nice descent into the village, which will slightly neutralise the inevitable sprint start, with gravity helping some of the weaker riders stay in the pack. Several gentle bends see your avatar weaving through the village without much auto braking being applied, and not very much in the gradient bar to worry the legs. It's easy to get lulled into a false sense of security and forget that there's any racing to be done. But very quickly you see that you're exiting the village, and with a sweeping left the gradient starts to rise. Initially, quite slight, the gradient quickly tips up to 6% in several points, and we have not even made it to the cobbles. In the distance, a church can be seen. It looks as if this signifies the top of the climb, but don't be fooled, that's only part of the way up. With a total length of 2.2 kilometres and a maximum gradient of 11%, the Eau de Quermont will make you pay your passage in sweat and grunts. As you're passing the houses on the climb, it's easy to see the gradients that your legs are already telling you all about. Going under the halfway marker, it's easy to think that you've finished the climb as the gradient has eased, but that's the tease of the Quermont. As you're easing off, it kicks again and makes you wonder why you do this sport. Even after you leave the cobbles and the official climb behind, the tarmac opens up on the legs with another aggressive 11% spike. Now back on the tarmac proper, we pass the monument to the winners and doth our caps to those who have made this race their own. With slightly lower gradients, the race will speed up to crest and the races will string out. Those that paid too much on the Quermont dropping off the back of the group and those at the front gritting their teeth as his thoughts turn to the wall that still waits ahead, the Paterberg. The descent is fairly consistent, with only a left turn near the bottom to activate the auto braking. Then in typical classics fashion, there is a hard right at the base of the Paterberg to fully scrub any speed that the racers have managed to bring in from the descent. Starting off at 10%, the road continues to head skyward and so does the gradient. Topping out with the gradient of 20% will have the racers hitting the downshift as quickly as they can. And then, almost as quickly as it started, it's over and you've crested the beast. And with legs like overstretched rubber bands, you can start lap two and do it all over again. So now the only question is, who will be roaring victory like the Lion of Flanders and who will be whimpering and falling off their bike? Thank you.